Good morning, everyone. Shaggington and I are so excited that we're talking about the eighth principle today, which is something that we've talked about in RE and we've talked about in YRUU, and we're so excited that it's coming to the whole congregation too. So we thought that this story that's called Ron's Big Mission by Rose Blue and Corinne Naden and illustrated by Don Tate would be a good story for diving into the eighth principle and whose voices we should be listening to and how we can approach change. So we hope you enjoy. Also, this is a true story about a boy who grew to be an astronaut named Ron McNair. You're up early this morning, Ron. What's the rush? asked Miss McNair. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Good luck. Ron was nine years old. That morning, he left his house with a plan that he'd been thinking about for some time. Someday, he thought, I'll be up there flying a plane. But today, Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. Do you have time for a donut? Morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's some place I've got to be. And Ron kept walking. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting baskets. Join in, called Carl. Hi, Carl, said Ron. I wish I could stay, but I have something important to do. More important than basketball, said Carl, and Ron laughed. He loved to play basketball, but not today. Today was too important. Ron kept on walking. When Ron got to the Lake City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast, and he was nervous, too. He took a deep breath, lifted his head high, and went inside. Miss Scott, the head librarian, welcomed her first visitor of the day, and Ron gave a little wave before going right to the shelves. Ron found some books on airplanes and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt a little sweaty, but he knew what he wanted to do. Miss Fielding, a white lady who was often in the library, stopped him. You can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. No thanks, Miss Fielding, said Ron. I'm going to do it all by myself. But Ron, she started to say. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk didn't look at him. Didn't she hear me, Ron wondered. But Ron knew what he had to do. He jumped on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said quietly. You know you can't, Ron, said Miss Scott. Only white people can check out books. Ron looked at them politely, but would not budge. I already read them here, and today I would like to check them out, he said. Miss Scott and the desk clerk did not know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. The desk clerk called the police. Two police officers came over. Let someone check these books out for you, son, said the policeman. You know the rules. But Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Now Miss Scott called Ron's mother. I know how you feel, baby, she said when she arrived, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. These rules are not fair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything. Not the desk clerk, not Miss Scott, not the policeman, not anyone. Miss Scott looked at Ron. She thought about all the times Ron came to the library and all the times he sat at the table for hours looking over so many books and she knew what she had to do. Miss Scott walked back into her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. Miss Scott returned and handed Ron a library card. His library card. Ron turned to the desk clerk. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said. The desk clerk took his library card and stamped the cards in the back of the books. These are due back in two weeks, she replied. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. 
and he tucked his books under his arm and took his mother's hand. And together, they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his room to open page one. Shaggington and I really like this story for many reasons, but the biggest one is because it points out how so many people were comfortable with the status quo. Uh, so many people were comfortable making excuses for why things were the way that they were and didn't say anything or do anything, even when they were being told specifically by someone, this hurts me. They're being told by a young black boy, this hurts me, this racism is not okay, and this is how it can change. And still, so many people were unwilling to hear that and unwilling to see how important change would be. I think it's so important that we always listen to each other, that we always listen to what our actions are doing to one another and absolutely empower one another when we see ways that we can make a difference. So I hope today and all days, we approach our learning with curiosity and also with a fight for justice.